You can't go anywhere without hearing the term AI these days. And you might be wondering how you can get started with AI applications in your own data center quickly and safely. Hi, I'm Laura Giordana, Technical Marketing at Nutanix, and today I want to walk you through Nutanix GPT in a box, a turnkey solution to give you your own private AI in your own data center. In this video, we'll walk through setting up GPT in a box on a VM and running the PyTorch inference endpoint and connect a chatbot app to it. Let's take a look. So I have an Ubuntu VM running here and it's running on AHV. And we can see in Prism Central that it has a GPU passed through to it. Now looking at the documentation on opendocs.nutanix.com, we have a section on GPT in a box that outlines all the steps for installing on a VM as well as a Kubernetes cluster. For this demo, we're gonna start with the VM-based installation for a POC and a quick demo. So looking at the docs, there's a couple of steps to get started, which I've already done on the system, but we can verify that these packages are installed and that our NVIDIA driver is also installed. So you can refer to the NVIDIA installation docs for driver installation for your specific GPU type. Next, we'll go ahead and download the Nutanix package from the GitHub repo. And so I'll pull this tar.gz file into my VM and set up our working directory as per the documentation. Then we can untar our package into that directory. Now the last step for setup is to install the required Python modules from the requirements.txt file. I'm doing this here in a virtual environment to isolate my dependencies. The VM-based version of GPT in a box is using the PyTorch machine learning framework. So as part of the requirements, we're installing several modules that are part of that framework, including the TorchServe inference server, along with other dependencies. Once everything has been installed, the next step will be to generate our model archive file, which is what TorchServe will be able to use for inference. Out of the box, the GPT in a box scripts have five supported models that they are pre-configured to work with but you can start the inference server with any hugging face model and GPT in a box also has custom model support. So you can load any model as long as the model files are located on storage that the GPT in a box scripts can access. So the first thing we need to do is create two new directories, one to store the model files and another to store the model archive files that will get generated from the source files. Now I'm going to just go ahead and create these directories lo uh, locally on my VM, but in a real world scenario, you would want to use shared storage such as NFS with Nutanix files. Once we have our directories created, we can go ahead and start building the building out the command. So we're going to use the generate.py script that comes with our GPT in a box package, and we need to pass a few arguments to it. So we need to pass it the name of the model we want to use. And so I'll go ahead and give it the name for the Llama 27B chat model. Then we'll need to pass it the um, two directories that we just created, the model path and the model archive output folder. And then finally, since we're using a Llama 2 model, we need to pass in our hugging face token. So you'll need to have access uh, to the Llama 2 model. You just need to accept the end user license agreement from Meta and um, you'll be granted access through hugging face. And then from Hugging Face, we can get our access token from our profile. I could create a new access token, but I'm just gonna use one that I have already pre-configured here. And I'll pass that to the script as the hf underscore token argument. The downloading of the model files, as well as the generation of the model archive file can take several minutes, depending on your internet speed, as well as the size of the model but this is a process that should only need to be done once. And then you can use that model archive file. You can store it on your NFS share, for example, for later use. Once our model archive file is generated, we can move on to running the inference server. So as part of our package, there is also a script called run.sh, which, which is a wrapper file to call the torch serve inference server. It takes a couple of arguments. The mandatory arguments are gonna be the name of the supported model, as well as the absolute path to the directory where the model archive file is stored. You can also pass it 
optionally the commit ID of a model hugging face repository if you want to use a specific version or the absolute path of input data. But for now, we'll just use the default mandatory parameters. In this demo, we're just serving a single model, but TorchServe supports registering multiple models simultaneously. Um, and you can use the management request API to do so. And the documentation describes how you can register uh, additional models with TorchServe. Once our inference server is up and running, just takes a couple minutes for the model to register, we can go ahead and send it some inference requests. So we can actually uh, set up our chatbot app to connect to it now, but let's go ahead and send a, sub a couple of sample requests to see how it actually works. So let's first use the ping requests. We'll use the ping API for TorchServe to just see that our server is up and running. So we'll run a simple curl command to ping that API and we can see that it's returning a status of healthy. And so now we can go ahead and start sending it requests. And so there are some examples within the documentation. Um, and we also have some data files, uh, examples as part of the package. So if you look in the data directory of the, the package, you can see that there's a question and answer folder, summarize and translate. So looking at some of these files, we can see we have a text file that says, tell me about llamas. And so we can use this and pass that to our inference endpoint. So now we'll go ahead and put together our curl command. I'll just copy the um, format from the documentation. We're going to point to our inference endpoint and port, which is localhost 8080. But now instead of using ping, we're gonna use the predictions slash model endpoint. And then we're gonna pass it our data file with our prompts about llamas. And the inference server will um, process that request and return a response. So now that we know that our inference server is up and running, we can connect our chatbot app to it. So the app that we're using is written in the open source framework Streamlit, which makes it really, really easy to create interactive web applications in just a few lines of code. And so the GPT in a box package has a demo folder that has a sample application in it with all the files that we need to get started. So we just need to install the requirements as per the readme deploy the models, which we've already deployed one of those models, and then just run the chatbot app. So after the requirements are installed, let's just take a quick look at the Python code before we actually run the app, just to see how it works. So taking a look at the Python script, it's less than 300 lines of code. We can see the available models it's been configured for, including our Llama 27B chat model. We can also see in the logic that when this model is selected, it will set the value of the LLM variable to the uh, model name. And then we can see where it makes the inference request using that variable, um, where it uses the same inference endpoint that we use in our testing. So now we can go ahead and run the application and we can launch it in our web browser. So we'll be able to access it over our VM IP address at the specified port. And it's now using our inference backend so we can start sending it prompts and making requests to it. So that's how easy it is to get GPT in a box up and running and a sample application connected to it. Now we can also do the same thing in the public cloud. So we were doing this on premises in the Nutanix data center, but we can also run GPT in a box in the public cloud. So here I'm running on AWS bare metal with Nutanix cloud clusters, and we can see our hardware. We are running a single node here with uh, T4 NVIDIA GPUs, and we're running eight of those in one node so we can support uh, more models. Now, if we take a look at the VM that's running, this is our VM that's hosting our GPT in a box packages, as well as running the inference server and is running our chatbot app. So here we can go ahead and ask it the same question about llamas. And on this particular instance, we are supporting both models. So we can see that we can also use the code model as well to ask it a question or ask it to produce some code for us about the factorial of a given number. So as we can see, Nutanix provides a consistent experience for your AI applications, whether you're running on premises or in the public cloud with NC2. AI is a rapidly evolving field, 
and GPT in a Box is having enhancements added to it all the time. So be sure to follow the GitHub repository and bookmark the documentation. See you in the next video.